Taylor calls V equals Omega cross R a useful relationship. And I want to talk about that a little bit, uh, partly because there's some subtleties in here, and there's some things that are not immediately obvious that's worth thinking about. Um, and the first thing is just visualizing stuff in 3D can be surprisingly hard, and especially when they're rotating. And so the first thing is I had on the reading questions. So here's my tailor here, um, old man. If you look at figure 9.8, I asked you the question, um, why is it that he draws the Z, X, and Y axes off at this bizarro angle instead of lining up the Z axis with omega? Wouldn't it be nice, since you get to choose your axes, wouldn't it be nice just to line up the Z axis with omega? And it turns out often that's a not, that is a nice choice. Here's why he didn't do it this time. All right, so I've got my setup here. It's it's not oriented exactly like his. Um, maybe if I move this around, it could, but whatever, it doesn't matter. It's not oriented exactly like his, but here we have the high saturation color, um, George, the dark gray uh, axes. Um, so we've got X, Y, and Z. I'm, I have Y here up because that's just the uh, V Python slash VizViz standard instead of Z, but whatever, same idea. And then these pastel axes are the axes in the rotating frame. So this, this, these three solid axes, or this, the, the high saturation color axes, are the inertial frame. Then here's X, Y, Z of the rotating frame. And then this gray thinner thing here is the omega vector. Why, these bizarre, why this bizarre orientation? I'm just going to start it rotating, and you will see why. So as it rotates, you will notice, here it comes, here it comes, there. Did you see it? There was a moment when the rotating axes were lined up with the inertial axes. And so what that lets you do, for example, is you could say at t equals zero, you could set the rotation angle to zero, and then the inertial and the rotating axes are lined up. So that's a reason why you might choose to do it this way. It might turn out that it's easier for you to set up the positions of all the things in the inertial frame and then have omega off at some random angle and then rotate around omega, which is what this is doing. In fact, if we go up and orient this so you're looking straight down omega, you can see the axes making a circle, a nice circle here around this omega vector, right? So I tra trace out, I, don't know, I should have it leave a trail or something, uh, whatever. So that's the reason for that. All right, so took a little break there and uh, fixed the test. It turns out, I was wondering, why are people who seem to be doing it right getting a much smaller number on problem five than I got? Why? Because I left some squares out. Oops, and the cosine alpha equation. So I fixed it. I also posted to Discord and a news item to the page, so you got that. Right. Um, this doesn't happen in real lectures, where in zero time I go away for an hour and fix something. Video is weird. Next thing I want to talk about is the whole V equals omega R thing. We've got this relationship here where if something's moving around in a circle, so what you're seeing here, the big green thing is the circle it's going in. Um, the red thing pointing down is the x-axis and the green thing pointing right is the y-axis. The z-axis is out of the page as is omega, the angular velocity vector. Um, the purple thing R is the radius of the thing moving in a circle and V is the velocity of the little pink particle that's moving around in a circle, right? So if you see it moving around in a circle, we there it goes. And with this, you have V equals omega R. Okay. And even you can even, if we pause this for a moment here, um, you can even use the right hand rule um, where, uh, you know, hold, hold up your ham, point your thumb out of the page, so along omega, and look, my fingers curl along the direction that V is going. Um, so yes, you would say omega as an omega vector points out of the page and its magnitude is V times R. All right, well now, so the expression that Taylor gives you is that V is omega cross R. And I asked you, what's the relationship between them? And most of you guys in the reading question says, oh, well, the omega equals VR only applies when R and V are perpendicular. And that is sort of the right answer. But um, I, I want to make sure there's a, there's a finer point on this, which maybe you guys were seeing, and I just didn't see it in your answers. Um, but it's not the same R. So what do I mean by that? So I'll get this thing rolling again. Whoop, there you go. Look, capital R 
is the R that you use in omega equals VR to get the magnitude of omega. Lowercase r here is the radius from the origin. And what do you use for the origin? Whatever you want, but often it makes sense to use the point that the object is rotating about if there's a fixed point, or the center of mass of the object if the object is flowing free through space. So the little r vector is the r from the origin to the position where the particle is. And omega cross that little r is the thing that gives you v. Right, so if we go back here um, and we, we look at what we've got here, I've got, uh, here's my right hand, so I want to point it so that it's along omega, so that when I bend it, it'll be along r, right, so there it is, omega cross r, and I get a v, actually r is a little bit out of the page here in 3D, so I get a v that's sort of back and into the page like that, omega cross r is v, and that works. Um, so that's the omega cross r that you can use. It's the it's pick a point in the object um, that the object is rotating about, the center of mass, whatever. Use um, lowercase r, the regular r vector for the position of any particle, and the velocity of that particle as a result of the rotation is just going to be omega cross r. So that's part of what makes this so very useful. All right, and finally, I want to talk a little about this omega cross q stuff. So um, first of all, old man, um, a little warning about cross products. And that is the cross product doesn't is not associative. You already know that the cross product is not commutative, right? So you have a oops cross b is equal to minus b cross a, right? You already knew that. Well, Okay, so maybe if you've taken linear algebra, you've learned that, okay, the, the commutative principle doesn't always apply, but often the associative principle does. Well, cross products are also not associative. Um, just as an example, if I do um, x hat cross y hat cross y hat, right? if I do that, well, x hat cross y hat is z hat, so we'll get z hat cross y hat, which is minus x hat. But if I associated it differently, x hat cross y hat cross y hat, well, y hat cross y hat is zero. So the associative principle does not apply for cross products. So you need to be a little bit careful about that. All right. So we're back to this little rotating thing where you have the s axes and the s prime axes. So in this case, the inertial axes are the ones that aren't rotating. So we'll call that not the S and S prime, we'll call that the S zero. That's what Taylor calls it, S sub zero axis. And then the S axis is the one that's the rotating frame of reference. So that would be the more pastel axes here. And Taylor gives us, um, he gives us this expression, dq dt in the S zero frame, so in the inertial frame is equal to dq dt in the S frame, the rotating frame, plus omega cross q where omega is the angular velocity of the rotating frame. So, and I, I say the angular velocity of the rotating frame, the inertial frame can't be rotating because then it wouldn't be inertial. So I'll say it's the angular velocity of the rotating frame relative to the inertial frame, but I could say relative to an inertial frame. So that's the angular velocity. Q is any vector. And so that's a useful thing. This is a very useful relationship. Um, and. I asked you the question in particular, what if Q, I said, what if Q is V, but let's actually say, what if Q is P, P is momentum, so MV. Uh, on the left, DP DT in the inertial frame, hey, that's DP DT, that's F equals DP DT, momentum principle stuff. That is just the acceleration of the object times its mass, assuming its mass is constant. Um, and that's what's going to be equal to F, the, um, real forces, all the forces that come from interactions on the object in an inertial frame here, right? So there's no inertial forces. On the right side, dp dt sub s, that is if you uh, measure dp dt in the rotating reference frame. So you're going to get a different derivative because you're measuring it relative to accelerating axes, relative to rotating axes. So because you get how different is the derivative, that's what the omega cross q term is. In this case, it's an omega cross p. So that tells you that omega cross p represents 
inertial forces. Now the sign is wrong because you would have to add the inertial forces to the real forces to get dp dt in the um, rotating frame. Um, but this omega cross q represents inertial forces, represents forces that show up uh, because you're doing a frame transformation. But what's neat about this relationship, back to the q relationship, is that it, it works for any old vector. And we'll work in the special case of velocity in the next couple of sections. All right, so that's that for this. Um, I think, in fact, that's all I'm going to say for today. Um, there will be more reading due Monday. Thinking is hard. I'll see you then.